All right. So the warm-up tells me we're having a little bit of trouble solving the kinetic energy equation for velocity. So I'll make sure I... Please pardon the interruption. Freshman students with last names beginning with A through C, please head to the gym balcony to get your pictures taken. Again, freshman students with last names A through on. C, it is time for your picture. Thank you. All right, so um, I'll make sure when we get to that section I look at that a little more carefully, okay? All right, so yesterday we did a lab, right? And so today we're going to tie in that lab. So today I'm just going to solve four example problems for you. So you're going to kind of solve them along with me. And then you're going to work on a, a, a set yourself, OK? So this isn't really anything new. Um, we talked about all the forms of energy, right? Energy takes all these different forms. We figured out how to calculate kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. And the potential energy due to gravity, we calculated as m times g times h. Okay. There are all kinds of other forms, and we're not going to really do too much with those yet, although we will add those in over the course of the year. So right now, we're just going to use kinetic energy, and we're going to use potential energy due to gravity. You can also have other kinds of potential energy, like if you store energy in a spring. You can compress a spring, and there's energy stored in it, and you can fire a little Nerf dart with it later, right? Or something. So. There's other kinds of PE, but right now PE for us is just going to be gravitational potential energy, all right? And then there's work. And every time I say work, you got to think energy transferred, because that's what it is. It's energy that's transferred somewhere else, either into it or out of their system, okay? So this is the first thing to jot down. So in the front of your book, when I, when I have the big final equation, we'll put it in our toolbox, but this is just kind of some notes. Mechanical energy is going to be all the energy associated with the position and motion of an object. So we're going to use the word mechanical to mean having to do with position and motion. All right? This just goes in the room. Where? Not in the back. This is not in your toolbox. In the front. Wherever you finish the last homework assignment, problem solving, here's a couple notes, and then we're going to solve some more problems with it. Toolbox is just kind of the big equation that we're going to use. So does anybody want to be a mechanical engineer? Nobody? You take your car to what to get it fixed? A mechanic. What does mechanic mean? It means having to do with the position and the velocity of things that move. Parts, pistons, camshafts, all kinds of stuff, right? So mechanics has to do with the study of things that move, physical objects, rigid objects. Okay? So mechanical energy is going to be what we call the energy of position and motion. So for our case, that means the mechanical energy is going to be the kinetic energy of an object plus its gravitational potential energy. That's the mechanical energy. So if I have a pendulum and it's swinging back and forth, it's mechanical energy at any point in time. So you could stop it right here. It's mechanical energy would be the potential energy it has because it's above the ground and the kinetic energy it has because it's moving. That's the mechanical energy, okay? It's what we called yesterday in lab the total energy, even though it's not really quite the total. There's other kinds of energy. I mean, this weight has nuclear energy. You could split the atoms in it, you get an enormous amount of energy. But we're not worried about the other kinds of energy. Just mechanical energy is just the energy it has because of its motion and its position above the ground. OK? Does that make sense? So in lab yesterday, we did, uh, if you did the pendulum, you got the part B, you know that it kind of looks like this, right? The potential energy of the pendulum started high. And as it swung down, so the potential energy was pretty high. And as it swung down, it lost potential. It got lower and lower and lower. The potential energy went down. And then it went up again when it went to the other side. And then it went down again, and then it went up again. The potential energy varied like that. All right? The kinetic energy also varied. At the very beginning, it was barely moving, right? You clicked on it, and it barely moved. 
it wasn't moving very fast at all. The dynamic went faster and faster and faster and faster until it got to the bottom, right? So its kinetic energy started small and got big, and then small at the other end, and then big in the middle, and then small again, right? So here's the interesting thing, though. It doesn't matter what the potential and the kinetic energy are doing. What was the total mechanical energy of our pendulum doing? Yes, Clayton? Uh, Too bad. You're stretching. What is the total energy up here doing? Increasing or decreasing? Just constant. Okay? That's the big idea. The mechanical energy of a system stays the same. Sometimes the energy sloshes to kinetic, sometimes it sloshes to potential, and it goes back and forth, but the total energy stays the same. And I think you got that with both labs. The, the, the croquet ball too, we threw up and went back down. I think you saw the same thing. The total energy stayed the same, okay? And so that's the big idea we're chewing on, all right? So we call this conservation of energy. What does conservation mean? If you're a conservationist, right? Pardon? To preserve. Um, preserve what? Yeah, that's kind of the connotation. So if you want to conserve public lands, the Grand Canyon, for example, what does that mean to conserve public lands? So conservation has this idea of preserving it or keeping it the same, right? Isn't that what you want to do? You want to keep it the same. You don't want to big, big old, build big old hotels and dynamite half the Grand Canyon for an amusement park so you can have roller coasters going out over it. You want to keep it the exact same as it's been for the last 40 million years, right? That's what it means to conserve something, to keep it the same. So when we say conservation of energy, that's the, that's the way we mean the word conserve. It stays the same. The energy stays the same. It goes from one form to another and back, but the total energy stays the same. That's the idea, okay? So this is the big idea for the whole unit, okay? In sort of conceptual ideas. If you have an isolated system, a system that's not interacting with the world outside of it, the total energy stays the same, the total mechanical energy. So if you have a pendulum, and you can pretend there's no air resistance, and you let it go, it will swing back and forth, and its total energy will stay the same. If you could suck all the air out of the room so there's no air resistance, it'll actually swing for days. And the only reason it'll eventually stop is because the flexing of the string up there produces tiny, tiny amounts of heat, which eventually will rob all the energy out of the system. Okay? It'll take forever. Not forever. A while. Okay? So, that's the big idea. If you have an isolated system, okay, now, me shoving on it, that wasn't isolated. Obviously, I changed its energy, right? Because I'm something outside the pendulum. But if you look at me and the pendulum together, and we're a system, the energy was conserved. I'm going to give the pendulum some energy, but now I'm tired, right? I had to lift it. So I lost some energy, the pendulum gained some energy, but the total energy of me and the pendulum stayed the same. Okay? So what that means is you cannot create energy, and you can't destroy it. You can't make energy. All you can do is transfer it from somewhere else. I mean, how do you heat your house? Do you make heat? No, you have to burn some kind of fuel to heat your house, right? Or you gotta use up some electrical energy, which means somebody else is burning fuel to make the electricity. You can't just make energy. You can only transfer it. That's the big idea, okay? So energy cannot be created or destroyed. We can always change its form. All right, so another way to say that is this. If a system is not isolated, so it's not by itself, then whatever energy you have at the end will be what you had at the beginning plus any transfers. Okay, so think about it like this. Think about what's in your wallet right now. You got 40 bucks. At the end of the day, what'll be in your wallet? Whatever you started with, plus any transfers, right? If somebody paid you five bucks, you got an extra five bucks. So what you have at the end of the day will be what you had at the beginning, plus the transfer, plus five, right? If you spend 10 bucks, it'll be 10 bucks less. So since 
energy is kind of the accounting system for the universe, we can think of it sort of in counting terms. Okay, what you have at the end of the day will be what you started with plus any transfers. So think about a car. You're zooming along the road, right? Who's got a car? Lauren, did you drive to school today? How, what kind of energy did you use to make your car go? So you got in this morning, you, and you hit the pedal, and the car started moving, right? Where did the energy come from to do that? The gas. So you, your engine converted gas, chemical energy, to motion, right? So Lauren's car is zooming along. The light turns red, and she hits the brakes. Freshman students with last names beginning with D through I, please wow. head to the gym balcony for your pictures. Again, right. freshman students with last names beginning with D through I, it's your turn for pictures. So Lauren's car is zooming along, the light turns red, and you do what? Where did the energy go? You, you had kinetic energy, right? And now it's, your car is stuck. Where did the energy go? Did you destroy energy? No, you just transferred it somewhere else. Anybody know? Heat. Heat. Brakes produce heat. Friction is a process that transfers mechanical energy to heat. Like, rub your hands together, right? You can feel the heat being generated. So friction produces heat. So now Lauren's brakes are hot. The light turns green. What does she got to do? She's got to burn more gas to get more kinetic energy to keep going again, right? Wouldn't it be cool if you could just store your energy and then reuse it? That's what electric cars are about. That's why they're so efficient. Instead of hitting the brakes, you use your um, generator to store your kinetic energy as electricity in your battery. And then when the light turns green again, you get it back out of your battery and make you go again. So instead of wasting your energy when you keep stopping and starting, you store it as electrical energy and then you bring it back as kinetic. That's why hybrids are so efficient in stop and go traffic, because they don't keep throwing away their energy and then having to make more. They're not so good on the highway driving to Lafayette or something, okay? Because the batteries don't last that long. But in stop and go traffic, hybrid cars are great because you don't have to throw your energy away as heat. You can store it and then get it back. All right. All right, so here's how we are going to write our big idea, okay? And you can go ahead and put this in your toolbox if you want, because this is the big idea. You're gonna write it first and we'll talk about it. So the mechanical energy final, so ME final. That's the mechanical energy at the end of an event. It's going to equal whatever you started with, that's ME initial, plus any transfers. It's like saying what's in your wallet at the end of the day is going to be equal to what it was at the beginning of the day, plus any transfers. So remember, work is the transfer of energy, right? Your engine does work when it transfers energy from gasoline to kinetic energy. Your brakes do work when they transfer kinetic energy to heat. So, ME is equal to PE plus KE. So that's what the ME means. And we're gonna have a sign convention about work, okay? If the work is positive, greater than zero, it means energy is added. If the work is negative, that means energy is taken away. And this is the exact same way we do it with finances, right? If you lose five bucks, that's a negative five in your ledger. If you gain five bucks, that's positive five in your ledger, right? So, if your dad hands you 20 bucks, that's plus 20. So that's gonna be our sign convention. If the work done, the energy transferred is positive, it means we added energy to our system. So if this is positive, it means whatever we start with plus whatever we add is going to be the final. If we lose energy, if energy is removed from our system, then W will be negative, and of course the final will be less than what we started with, right? So I'm going to solve four examples. We're going to solve four examples, kind of working through this idea of conservation of energy and how we apply it, all right? I've saved the examples, but on two of them, I'm gonna have you kind of work along with me um, 
to kind of get the idea. So here's my first example, and I'm going to try to solve it on the board here. Whoops. So this one, just watch, okay? Kind of, kind of see how it goes, and then I'll, I'll have you guys do the next one with me. All right. So we have a pendulum, and somebody lifts it up 0.45 meters above the lowest point, and they let it go, and it swings back and forth. I want to know how fast is it going at the lowest point in its swing, right there, okay? Now, when we make a diagram, the important thing about our diagrams for energy problems is defining our reference point, the ground, okay? Because you can make the, the reference point anywhere you want, but we are going to call the lowest point here y equals zero, okay? So make sure on your diagram you show me where the origin is, the reference point, okay? Now, our variable. Because we're going to have kinetic energy, we're going to have mass and velocity. And because we have potential energy, we're going to have mass and the height. And since we're looking at the energy at the beginning of the problem, that's what we have up here, and at the end of the problem, when the pendulum is down here, we're going to have the velocity initial and the height initial, and the velocity final and the height final. So those are going to be our variables we might also have some work done. So that's gonna be my variable list, okay? And um, it says the, it's raised to a height of 0.45 meters and then released. So at the beginning of the problem, the initial height is 0 0.45 meters. Does that make sense how I got that? What's the final height? What's the height down here? Zero. It's zero, because of where I define my coordinate system, right? That's zero meters. Um, what else do we know? A pendulum is raised to a height of 0.45 meters and it's released from rest. What is the release from rest telling us? Yeah, What's zero? Initial the initial velocity is zero. It's not moving. And we are trying to find the velocity at the lowest point. So we're trying to find this. Okay? Now, it also says we're going to assume energy is conserved. We are not going to worry about the little bit of energy that is lost to air resistance. I mean, you're just going to lose a whole lot of energy in a swing. I mean, it came right back to my hand there, didn't it? It didn't lose much energy. But it's not a terrible assumption, okay? If you let it swing for half an hour, it'll be swinging lower. But for one swing, it doesn't really lose much energy. So because it doesn't lose any energy, that tells us that the work is zero, okay? And that's going to be a joule. So anytime you have a problem where energy is conserved, if the problem tells you that energy is conserved, that tells you that you're not going to have any transfers into or out. It's going to remain the same. Okay? All right, so here's how these problems kind of go. We have a principle. The principle is actually called the work energy theorem. The mechanical energy at the end of the problem equals the mechanical energy at the beginning of the problem plus any work done. That's a principle. Okay? We're going to apply it to this problem because I cannot solve that equation for V final, right? Is there a V final in there? No. So I, you can't say I'm going to solve this for V final yet. You have to apply it. Okay? Now, the mechanical energy is the kinetic energy final plus the potential energy final. That's going to equal the initial energy, so that's the kinetic energy initial plus the potential energy initial plus the work. And now let's knock some things off. The initial velocity is zero. So does it have any kinetic energy at the beginning? Because kinetic energy is energy of motion, right? There is no initial kinetic energy. I can cross that off. Can I cross anything else off? My work is zero. So because I know energy is conserved, that goes away. Anything else? And it doesn't matter if you miss something, because when you plug in zero for it, it'll go away anyway, but there's something else that's zero. Porter? The final potential energy. Yeah, the final height is zero, so there's no potential energy at the end, right? You guys see that? So there's no final potential energy. That's zero. So what does this leave us with? It leaves us with the kinetic energy final, so one half, mv final squared 
equals the potential energy initial. Potential energy is mgh, and that's initial, okay? So we built ourselves an equation using the principle, and now we're gonna solve for v final. Okay, do you see how I got that? All right, so I'm gonna solve for v final here. And this is where we had a little bit of trouble in the warm-up. So how do you get v final by itself? Well, it's multiplied by m, and it's multiplied by a half, right? Well, let me, let me step back. Something cancels here. What cancels there? Mass. Mass. Does this term have a mass? Yeah. Does that term have a mass? Every term has a mass. Freshman students with it last cancels. names beginning with J through P, you are up for your photos on the gym balcony. Again, freshman students with last names beginning with J through P, it is your turn for pictures. So I'll show you what happens if it, we don't have an M in every term. But if every term has an M in it, we can cancel it. Now, I've got a one-half here. We can divide by one-half, but then we're going to get an ugly compound fraction. So I'm just going to multiply everything by 2. If I multiply everything by 2, 2 times a half just is 1. So I'm going to get a V final squared equals, multiply this side by 2, I get 2GH initial. I don't quite have V final yet. What do I got to do? Take the square root. So the final velocity will be the square root of 2 times g times the initial height. So grab your calculators. Let's see if we can agree on an answer here. Let's take the square root of 2 times 9.81 times 0 0.45. I've got my units here. I've got meters, seconds, and that's meters, so I'm going to make conversions. So try to do this all in one line, guys. Take the square root, open a parentheses, and just put 2 times 9.81 times 0.45 and close your parentheses. So don't do it in parts. Just so you can do the whole thing. And what do you get for an answer there, Raiden? A little louder. That's is it, what I do. Is it 08 or 09? Yeah, 08. So 08. And that is meters per second. I've got meters times meters. That's meters squared second per second squared. Take the square root, I get meters per second. Okay? So there we applied the principle of the conservation of energy to solve. So did you get a different answer? What'd you get? 2.97. Uh-oh. That's what I got. 2.97? Yeah. Check that again, Brady. 2.97, huh? Let's ballpark this. 10 times 4.5 is 4.5 times 2 is about 9. Square root of 9 is a little less than 3. So what is it? 2.97. That looks good. Do you guys agree on that? All right, good deal. Does that make sense how we do all that? Okay, I've saved that for you. So I've already solved this. I applied the work energy theorem, that's what it's called. For this problem, I knocked off things that were zero. I got an algebraic expression, which I solved for V final. I solved it algebraically. I plugged in my numbers. Oh, and if we use two significant figures, we've only got two significant figures there, then you get 3.0 meters per second. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, you guys want to try one? It's rhetorical. We're going to try one anyway. All right, so here's my second example, and this is a work along example, because it's boring to watch, right? So go ahead, and right after you took some notes in the front of your book, write example number two. I've got a bicycle rider, and she's going to ride down a hill, and I want to know how fast is she going at the bottom of the hill. Okay, so see if you can make a variable list for the little bike rider girl. And I'll leave that like that. Oh, come on, here we go. <coughs> so 
So when we have these energy problems, we're gonna have the initial height and the final height, the initial velocity, the final velocity, possibly the mass, and the work. Those are the variables we're gonna have. So we're gonna say our little bike rider is going along the hill, she goes down the hill, and she ends up down here. So she ends up down here on her little bicycle there. Get the helmet. And we are going to call the bottom of the hill y equals zero. Okay? So, what's 5.0? Is it the velocity of the girl be at the beginning or the end of the problem? Beginning. So that's your initial velocity. So put 5.0 meters per second. Um, she then coasts down the 12 meter high hill. So the hill is 12 meters high. So the initial height was 12 meters. What's your final height? How high is she at the end of the problem? Caitlin? Yeah, she's down here, what we call zero. So that's zero meters. Um, do we know anything else, Sam? We know one more thing, I think. Do we know the mass of the girl? No, we don't. We don't know the mass. What is it? How do you know? What part of the problem tells you that? You see right here, assuming the energy is conserved. If you can assume the energy is conserved, then you know the work here. Okay? And the next problem, that won't be true. So that's zero. Okay? So see if you guys can apply this principle. The mechanical energy at the end of the problem equals the mechanical energy at the beginning plus the work. Write out what it means algebraically and see if you can solve it to get the final velocity of the girl. Okay? So let's take a crack at it.
Anybody got an answer? Even close? So let's just look at it here. Just so everybody's clear, when I grade your homework, I'm looking to see, did you apply the work energy theorem? And once you apply it, did you tell me what you're gonna do with this? So th you apply it and get to this equation, and you're telling me you're gonna solve this for V final. Now look, every term has an M in it, right? Every single term has an M in it, it'll cancel. If every term doesn't have an M, you can't cancel it. So the M's cancel, and then I multiplied everything by two, so two times a half is just V final squared, two times a half is V initial squared, and two times GH is two GH. Remember, when you multiply an equation by two, you gotta multiply every single term by two. You gotta multiply this by two, and that by two, and that by two. So I get this equation, right? How do I get V final by itself? Take the square root of the whole thing. Freshmen with last names beginning with R through Z, and any freshman who has not yet had their photo taken, please head to the gym balcony. Again, any freshman who has not yet had their picture taken, please head to the gym balcony. Thank you. So a couple mistakes here, guys. Look up here real quickly, just so you don't make the same mistake. You gotta take the square root of the whole thing. You cannot take the square root of that plus the square root of that. That's not true, mathematically. The square root of a squared plus the square root of b squared is not the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? So it's the square root of the whole thing. Please use your radical as a grouping symbol. It's the square root of the whole thing. Don't write it like this, this is ambiguous square root of v squared plus 2gh initial. That, that doesn't show what the square root applies to, right? So don't, don't, don't do that. So there's the algebraic solution. Once I take the square root, that's just v final. And now see if you can plug in everything in your calculator and let's see if we can agree on our answer here. So v initial is five, so you're gonna take the square root and then open parentheses, put five squared plus two times 9.81 times 12. And then close your parentheses. Why does it be a square root? It's kinetic energy. Yeah. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So when I multiply everything by two, I get v final squared equals v initial squared and then potential energy is MGH. The M's canceled, and when I multiply it by two, I got two GH, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Lindsay, did you get an answer? 16.1. Anybody else get 16.1? The final velocity of the girl at the bottom of the hill is 16.1 meters per second, okay? Now, here's a way to ask, does it make sense? How fast was she going at the top of the hill? She's going five. So you would expect at the bottom of the hill, the answer is bigger than five. If you make a mistake and get three at the bottom of the hill, you gotta know something's wrong there, right? All right, so I've saved this one also as an example, and you guys have kind of worked through it. I wanna do, uh, so there's my solution, 16.1 is what I got. Although it should only have two significant figures, so 16. So there's how it goes. So now let's do a slightly different one. This one has a twist to it, okay? And I'll kind of do it, you don't have to uh, do it. I got a motorbike now, and the motorbike's zooming along, it's going 60 miles an hour, and it hits the brakes, and I want to know how much work is done to stop the motorbike. So let me adjust this slightly. So 500 kilogram motorbike is going 60 miles an hour, miles per hour, whoops. Gonna need a conversion there, right? On a level road, how much work must be done by the brakes to bring it to a complete stop? So the brakes have got to transfer energy, right? 
The work is the energy they transfer. I want to know how much energy must the brakes transfer. All right? So here is my motorbike. Oh, come on. Then we'll not stop in the right place. All right, guys, head's cut off. What do you want to call zero here? Let's just call the road y equals zero. OK? So does he have any potential energy at the beginning of the problem? At the end of the problem? No, this one's going to be kind of easy, right? So here's what we know. The initial height of the motorbike is zero meters. And the final height of the motorbike is zero meters. His potential energy is not going to change. The initial velocity of the motorbike is 60 miles per hour. Um, the final velocity of the motorbike is what? Zero. Zero. And that's either meters per second or miles an hour. We happen to know the mass is 500 kilograms. And is the work zero, Sam? No, we're trying to find the work. So energy is going to go someplace we can't account for right now. It's going to go into heat. That's what brakes do. So we can't account for it. So our energy is not going to stay the same. So when we apply our big idea, the mechanical energy of the motorbike at the end of the problem equals the mechanical energy at the beginning plus the energy transferred. The work is not zero. So we're going to apply this principle. For our problem, what kind of energy does it have at the end? What's the final mechanical energy? Does it have kinetic energy at the end? No, it's not moving. Does it have potential energy at the end? No, it's not above the ground. Now, if you're not sure about that, it's okay. You can still write out, um, well, I'll do it in a second. So the final mechanical energy is zero. It's not moving and it's not above the ground. That equals the mi initial mechanical energy. What kind of energy did it have at the beginning of the problem? Was it moving? It was, so it has kinetic, one half mv initial squared. And was it above the ground initially? Was it on a hill going down or something? No, it was level ground, so there's no potential. So that's the initial mechanical energy plus the work. So that's our equation. And we're trying to solve for the work. This isn't too hard, right? In this case, the work simply equals negative 1 half m times v initial squared. Okay, so we can put in our numbers. That's one half, 500 kilograms times, um, we gotta be a little bit careful here. We gotta multiply this by one mile, 1609 meters, and multiply that by one hour, 3600 seconds. And when you do all that, I think you get 26.4? 26.8? So we have 26.8 meters per second. And then we're going to square that. And, oops, I forgot the negative. There's a negative there. Right there. So, uh, what do you get? Ezra? I got negative 179,783. Negative 180,000 joules. Is that close? Yes. And it's negative. Negative means energy was taken out of the system. The brakes removed energy from the motorbike. Okay? Threw it away. Got it. Key. All right. Does that sort of make sense? So in this case, did the mass cancel? Did every single term have a mass? Does this have a mass in it? No, so you can't cancel the mass. All right? All right, let me just show you what happens if maybe you get a little confused. 
Maybe you're not sure what zero. So you say the final kinetic energy is one half mv final squared plus mgh final equals one half mv initial squared plus mgh initial plus work. And that is perfectly valid to write that out. Because now you can look at your variable list. What's the final velocity? Zero. So this term goes away because it's zero. What about here? H final is zero. So that term goes away. So I'm left with zero equals. This one doesn't go away. One half mv initial squared. But H initial is also zero. So that goes away. So I get plus w. So it doesn't matter how you build your equation. If you're not quite sure if the kinetic energy potential energies are zero, and you're not sure you want to just knock them off, you can write it out, and then use your variable list to decide what things are zero. Okay? Either way, you're going to end up with the same algebraic solution, which is that the work is minus one half m times v initial squared. Okay? All right. I want to do one more problem, and. Uh, Here it is. So, anybody been to uh, Holiday World? You ride the wildebeest? This is what physics teachers do while they're waiting in line. They make up physics problems. So, as near as I can tell, these are the numbers I got from the wildebeest waiting in line. Okay? I had to ask one dude a question, but you know how they weigh you before you get on? So I asked him, he said it was 550 pounds was the limit of your group or something. So that's where I got 250 kilograms. So, a roller coaster, a water coaster, um, has a mass of 250 kilograms. It's going six meters per second when it approaches that hill, and it's going to go up the hill, which is five meters tall, about 15 feet, and I want to know how fast is it going at the top. Okay? And we're going to assume, because it's all nice and watery, that it's really slick and we don't have any friction. So we're not going to lose any energy to friction. Okay? So how fast is he going at the top of the hill? That's the question, all right? So, to solve that problem, I've got a big old picture in my way here. Let's see if we can solve that problem. So, um, boy, I gotta start down here, I guess. So here is my, my ride, and it goes up a hill. Right? So here's my raft. It goes up a hill and it ends up up there, right? And the hill, I'm going to call this zero. And how high is the hill? Six. Five meters. Five meters. So that's how high the hill is. Okay? So our variable list is going to look like this. The mass is 250 kilograms. The initial velocity is six meters per second, 6.0 meters per second. The final velocity, we don't know. The initial height is what? How high are we at the beginning of the problem? Zero. You guys see that we're at zero there? Zero meters. And the height at the end of the problem is five meters, because the hill is five meters tall. Okay? Now, I'm going to kind of short circuit here. I'm going to apply my big idea. The mechanical energy final equals the mechanical energy initial plus the work. What is the work? Zero. How do you know? Caitlin? Um, because it says that the energy is conserved. Right. We're assuming energy is conserved, so we're not going to transfer any energy into or out of the uh, water coaster. OK? All right, so this is 0. At the end of the problem, we have kinetic energy. So that's one half mv final squared. And we have potential energy. So that's mgh final. That's at the end of the problem. That equals the energy we have at the beginning of the problem. Please pardon the interruption. At the beginning, we Sophomores, just have to The last name is A through D. It is your turn for pictures. Please head to the gym balcony. Again, sophomores with last names A through D, it's your turn for pictures. Thank you. So. At the end of the problem, we have kinetic energy, because it's moving, and we have potential energy. 
At the beginning of the problem, we have no potential energy because we're on what we call the ground, right? And so all we have is kinetic energy. And what are we trying to solve for? Lindsay, I think you said it. Yeah, the final velocity. How fast are you going at the top of the hill? So, does every term have an M? It does, I can cancel it. I'm trying to solve for V final. So what am I gonna do next? Probably. Multiply by two. Probably multiply by two, clear the fraction, right? If I multiply by two, I get two times a half, I get V final squared equals, I'm sorry, not equals, plus two GH final equals V initial squared. You guys see how I got there? If you multiply everything by two, the so one half cancels, you get V final squared, plus two GH equals two times this is just V initial squared. And we're trying to find V final squared. So what do we gotta do next? Subtract yeah, we gotta bring this to the other side, right? We gotta subtract it from both sides. So that means that V final squared is gonna be V initial squared minus two GH final. And if that's V final squared, then take the square root of that and we'll get V final. Okay, you see how we did that? Grab your calculators and see if you can calculate the final energy now. So take, take the square root of 6.0 meters per second squared minus two times 9.81 times five meters. And that will be your final velocity. Try it on your calculator there. Got it, Lindsay? Got it, Austin? No? Just put this in your calculator. Six squared minus two times 9.81 times five. All inside of a square root. Who's got problems? You got problems right there, Rick? What? You got problems? My thing doesn't, it does calculate the minus sign of the radical. It doesn't calculate. It can't. Does it calculate? Because it's like the square. It can't put the minus sign outside of the radical. What's six squared, guys? 36. What's two times 10? Times five. 100. 36 minus 100 is negative. negative. You need the square root of a negative number? No. So what does that mean? You, you can't find a final velocity because it's broken? What do you think? Porter? Break? It's got to be this squared minus that, and then the square root of the whole thing. So, how? What are we going to do? We, the roller coaster is broken. Get out of line. So here's the interesting thing. 
When a problem doesn't have a mathematical solution, it means that it's physically impossible. You can't get up the hill. You don't have enough energy to get up the hill. So how can you ask how fast you're going at the top of the hill if you don't have enough energy to get up the hill? So when you get a non-solution mathematically, that means something physically. It means you can't get up the hill, okay? So this has no solution because the roller coaster will not get up the hill. So how are you gonna solve this problem with the amusement park? Anybody been on the road beast? Been on the man. What do they do? They add a conveyor. There's a friction conveyor that's spinning and your rack hits it and it gives you a shove. It adds energy. They're gonna transfer energy into your system using an electrical motor, okay? So, our last problem has no solution. And that's okay. That's a valid answer. How fast are you going at the top of the hill? The answer is, you can't reach the top of the hill. You don't have enough energy to get up there, right? If you're riding your bicycle slowly, can you coast to the top of a high hill? No, you don't have enough energy. You would have to add energy by pedaling, right? Converting food energy from your body into the mechanical energy of your bike. You can't just coast up a big hill if you're not going very fast. So, the, the real version of, the, of the, a roller coaster has a conveyor belt which adds energy. And so my estimate is about 10,000 joules of energy for that thing, okay? So when you do all that, you can solve this problem. So I'm just gonna show you. You still have an initial height of zero. You still have a final height of five. Your mass is 250 kilograms. Your initial velocity is six. And now your work is plus 10,000. We're gonna add 10,000 joules of energy and now ask, how fast are you moving? So, when you apply the work energy theorem, you're gonna get the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy equals the initial kinetic energy plus the work, and the work is not zero, okay? Now here's where you gotta be careful. Does every single term have an M in it? No, you cannot cancel the M. You're gonna have to keep them, okay? So if you work through this, we're gonna multiply everything by two. So you're gonna have mv final, two mgh final. Multiply this by two and you get mv initial. Multiply that by two, you get two w. I'm trying to find the final velocity. So I'm gonna bring this term to the other side and I'll get mv final squared equals that plus that and then minus this term when it comes to the other side. Divide everything by m, it's a beast. No pun intended. And then, once you divide everything by m, the m's do not cancel, because that one doesn't have an m, right? Now you can take the square root of both sides. So this is the algebraic solution for the Wildebeest. Okay? It's a lot of work. Don't worry, you won't have to do it every time. That's just a more challenging problem. Plug in all your numbers, and it turns out you're going about 4.2 meters per second at the top of the hill with the help of the conveyor, okay? I think they have a, road, a water coaster at um, Great Wolf Lodge in Cincinnati too. You, like go down the hill, and then the next hill you like you can feel the, the conveyor belt shoving you up, right? All right, so that's how the solution works. So what you guys are gonna do, and you're gonna have the, the day tomorrow to do it, is you're gonna solve a problem set of problems like this, okay? I would like you to do the first two or three tonight, or at least try them, okay? So get started, you got 10 minutes. Maybe you can do the first one or two. You have got to show me where you apply the work energy theorem and what you get and what you're solving for. So I call this the plan and then solve it algebraically, okay? So this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be a problem set where we're gonna care about your solutions. So make neat solutions. So in your homework book, call it problem set 3.2. Question number one. Make a diagram and go ahead and get started there, okay? And then tomorrow will be a work day. You guys are gonna be out, I don't know when, for your pictures. So that's why I kind of planned it as a work day. Um, so they'll take you out for your pictures and you'll come back and keep working, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Can you add those to the Yes. 
I will add that to the, I'll add the link to these in a minute. All right, Garrett, how are you doing? All right, sophomore students with last name E through K, make sure to take all of your items with you so that when the bell rings, you can go to your okay. second period class. Again, last names E through K. Sorry, we're getting interrupted here all the time with these uh, pictures. Take all of your items with you so that when the bell rings, you're ready for your second period class. Thank you. All right, so you feel like you got enough of that to start solving the problems? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I um, I made a video, and you, I'll put the link up with the um, the lecture examples. But you saw them in the in the lecture, right? Yes, I did. Okay. All right, and then tomorrow, because it's picture day, everybody's gonna be in and out. It was just gonna have a work day, so you can check in and ask questions when you need to. But we're not gonna have any lesson or anything. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep.